Introducing Android Env, an open-ended platform for training agents on Android apps and games, with a universal touchscreen interface, access to the entire operating system, and a number of ready-to-use tasks. Android Env is a promising domain for RL research. So I just stumbled across this uh, tweet, tweet a couple of days ago, and I thought I kept covering this because it seems like a really, really uh, impactful future uh, environment. So. I'm gonna walk you through the, their blog. So they have they have a blog here, and they also open sourced a GitHub uh, repo uh, with instructions how to get this started and to start training your RL agents on on Android, uh, different Android applications. So they also have a technical report. I'll walk you through that one as well. Just some important details, and by the end of this video, hopefully you'll understand like why this is important and how you can get started uh, playing with your own Android RL agents. So first of all, the the the, the probably the most obvious thing is this. So. Uh, they say here the increasing complexity of environments has driven the development of novel algorithms and agents such as DQN, so that's the uh, Deep Q network from 2013, and Atari uh, like uh, learning environment ALE was the the thing that basically made it happen aside from convolutional neural networks. But like yeah, just focusing on environments. Then we had AlphaGo again, Go simulator, PPO like OpenAI's uh, algorithm. Proximal policy optimization, uh, like it couldn't. They used Mujoko to develop that one, and again, AlphaStar used StarCraft II environment. So, in order to advance the state of the art even further, researchers seek new and more, more stimulating environments to tackle. So, the next step, and this is really exciting, basically, how you can take whatever Android application and train an RL agent with a couple of caveats. So basically, and we'll see that in the tech report and on the GitHub later, but you'll need to have an open source app, obviously, and you'll need to modify the source code a bit so that it outputs the rewards, which then you'll parse via custom-made tasks and finally, you'll have the, the complete thing. So you know you'll you'll define when the episode ends, uh, how what are the rewards in your environment, and then you can train the agents. But like other than that, it's really cool. And yeah, let's continue here. Um, yeah, you can see some examples of like a contact app, and they're using here like whatever, like opening Play Store, and. Um, you can even um, use YouTube. You can browse the web. You can you can do basically whatever. You can play games. You can do whatever you uh, Android op offers. Like the whole ecosystem of these apps is now uh, basically uh, open for developing uh, custom reinforcement learning agents. And you can see here some games like 2048, etc. So let me just uh, jump straight into the tech report, and then we'll see how you can actually create those custom tasks so you can train your own RL agents. So here is the paper, and um, I just want to walk you through the main ideas here. So first first things first, so this is the obvious one, but screen pixels constitute the observations. The action space is defined by touch screen gestures, and this is not completely true. We'll see what the raw action space looks like in a minute. Uh, the interaction is real time, and this is really important. And the actions are executed asynchronously while the environment runs at its own time scale. So this means that basically uh, the environment is not a lockstep environment like Atari, where you basically send an action. So the environment waits until you uh, figure out what your next action will be, and then once you send the action to the environment, it executes a step forward and then waits again for your next action. So that's the lockstep uh, paradigm. Here, on the other hand, it's a real-time environment. That means Android uh, emulator doesn't care whether you skip certain actions if you were too slow to compute that action or whatever was the problem. So that's uh, something that makes this even more challenging than those other simulators. And we'll dig in a bit more details uh, in a couple of minutes there as well. But like, I just want to state this one. So the sheer number of apps built for a multitude of important aspects of human life, ranging from education and business to communication and entertainment, provides virtually unlimited challenges for RL research. So like, this is going to be big, in my opinion. Like, uh, we we now have a comp like a huge testbed of like of of applications which are actually meaningful. Like, comparing that to Atari games or those made up environments, it will be so much easier to actually after training these agents to deploy them in, into some product. So there is a, a much lesser gap. Um, between this environment and the thing you actually want, and between compared to Atari or some other environments. Okay, uh, so let's continue here. So 
I also already mentioned, so Android M is unable to run in lockstep. And let me jump over all of these and first uh, like tackle that problem. Okay, so here are some additional details. So they say it here, another important factor to consider in real-time environments is that agents require some deliberation time to generate the next action given an observation. So that means if you have an agent that's a convolutional neural network, once it receives the observation, it will take some time to process that observation in order to output the action. And that doesn't matter in those lockstep environments, but here the timings actually do matter. So they say it here, in a traditional lockstep environments, the environment generates an observation and pauses to wait until the agent responds with an action, before stepping the simulation forward. Uh, so, okay, and the diagram is here, and basically, so once you ob get the observation, uh, they kind of compress the deliberation time because it's not doesn't matter. So basically, once you compute it, you issue an action, and then the environment steps forward, and then you just repeat, and you can see uh, there are no problems here. But on the other hand, uh, if you have a real-time environment like Atari Env, like uh, Android Env, uh, the large deliber deliberation time can be harmful to performance. And they have a nice chart here as well. So here, the action sends the so the agent sends the action, and you you can basically in order to cope with this problem of of this being a real-time environment, you can insert these artificial weights uh, inside your routine. And so what happens is once once you uh, issue an action, uh, the simulator starts rendering the observation. So this may vary depending on the app, etc. And then once you get the observation, uh, it takes some time for the agent to compute the next action, and then it issues the action. And, and as you can see, because of the variance of this thing and of the rendering, you'll have to kind of think about this a bit more than in your lockstep environments. So that's something to keep in mind. It's gonna make uh, this a bit more challenging, but yeah, I guess it's not that big of a deal. Um, okay, let me get back to the beginning of the this tech report, and let's start with the action interface. So basically, the action interface is super simple. So uh, the native action space of the environment consists of a tuple consisting of a position, uh, basically, you have x and y coordinates, which are in the continuous space, and then the Android amp will, depending on the actual device you're using, the resolution of your emulator, it will just discretize these continuous actions into those pixels, so that it's, it's basically, you don't have to care about the actual resolution. Uh, the second part of your action will be this discrete uh, value, so it can be touch, lift, or just repeat. Basically, yeah, you can either touch the screen, you can either lift uh, uh, the, the pointer, and you can repeat the previous action. So that's the raw action space. And the thing is, in order to actually, in order to meaningfully interact with Android uh, applications, as you may know, uh, you need these gestures, so which are much more complex. And they say it here, the complexity of the interface arises from the fact that individual raw actions on their own do not necessarily trigger a meaningful change in the environment. And they have nice uh, visualizations here. Basically, you can see the swiping, uh, and you can see simple touch and lift. You can see a bit more com like nonlinear uh, swipe uh, movement. And basically, uh, this makes it so much harder for the agent to to learn because you have to have a you have to 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 be both precise in the spatial sense and also in the time sense. So you can't you can't. Uh, do it like this and then stop here and then continue doing the swipe because the system, the Android itself, probably won't interpret that as a correct gesture as a swipe action. So you'll have, so the agent will have to both be precise both uh, time-wise and space-wise, let's call it that way. Um, and I think they mentioned it here. So this need to compose the actions paired with the difficulty of solving the underlying task itself. Uh, leads to a difficult exploration problem. So for example, in order to learn to play chess, an agent must not only find a winning strategy, it also has to learn to move pieces through drag and drop gestures. So yeah, that's the, the part I mentioned and that's something to, to keep in mind. Um, aside from these informations from the observation, which is basically an RGB frame, uh, you'll have additional text uh, task extras. And uh, so an extra in Android Env is any information that the environment sends to aid the understanding of the task. The information sent through this channel is typically very useful for learning, yet difficult to extract from raw pixels. And they gave an example of, uh, I think, like, 
text being displayed on the screen and instead of you having to parse and learn the OCR additionally uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have the option of just uh, circumventing that and printing that um, like just putting that in, into this extras variable which will contain the string directly making it a bit easier to learn the, the, the task at hand. Um, so I mentioned that in order to uh, actually deploy your uh, RL agent to these applications, you'll have to modify the apps in a way in order to, 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 to create the notion of a reward and of a end of episode signal, etc. So they say here, while Android uh, is an op uh, operating system with no inherent rewards or episodes, Android AMV provides a simple mechanism for defining tasks on it. And we'll see how that functions. Uh, I'll just walk you through the GitHub uh, and that, that's going to be the, the, the best explanation, I guess. Um, they made a small selection of tasks already, and you can see some apps like uh, Catch here and uh, Rocket Slave, Press Button, some apps like 2048, uh, like this This is a popular game, and Blockinger. And you can see the layout here is pretty complex. And they say it here, for example, most agents perform well on tasks such as Catch, so this is a simple one. They have a simple action interface and dense rewards. Whereas the combination of a highly structured interface, you can see the complex layout here, like all of these buttons and here the, the actual screen of the game. Uh, time sensitivity and sparse rewards uh, renders blocking her particularly difficult to solve. And they tested a bunch of common uh, RL agents. And the interesting thing was that actually DQN, one of the oldest agents out there, like deep learning agents at least, uh, Deep RL agents uh, has one, maybe one of the best performances on on all of these tasks, and it, as you can see, these uh, cyan curves, uh, DQN outperforms many of these other agents like RT D2 or Impala, etc. And you can also see the progression, like going from top left here to bottom right. You can see that the tasks get harder and harder, and basically the performance really drops uh, drops down. And yeah, um, okay. By the way, for those of you who haven't been developing Android apps, um, let me just kind of give you some intuition here. Uh, basically, you when you, when you when you open up an Android Studio, and you, you can basically in order to de debug your app, you 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 summon you you initialize this emulator, which can be arbitrary device which you need to specify, and it will have certain like height uh, and certain width of the screen. So you can also pick a specific uh, like a version of Android. So all of that that can be specified through Android Studio. So these are just some things you won't have to to worry about because the uh, emulators themselves uh, care about this part, and that's a, that's just abstracted from you. Um, additionally, they, they mentioned like a bunch of uh, useful environments that were previously uh, open sourced. Uh, or advised, some of them are like uh, you have to pay the license, like Mujoko. Uh, but like they end up here saying that since Android has billions of users and Android M provides SAS that run on the standard Android uh, operating system simulator, agents trained on the platform could potentially tackle a wide range of use cases leading to direct real world impact. And this is something I'm really passionate about. So seeing these agents uh, and RL in general having some real world impact will be super super interesting and i hope to to, to see like uh, research and apps happening because of this uh new environment so having said that let me go back to the github and show you how to actually create a task okay so if you open up this uh tasks guide md uh, file you'll see these two sections here where they basically describe what you need to do in order to enable your Android application to be used as a training ground for your, your RL agent. And the main things are, so you have this setup steps, which will, uh, once, the, uh, once the training start, it will just do a couple of things, like you can automate installation of uh, the uh, application from the APK, APK file, which is just Android uh, binary. Um, you can do a bunch of those stuff, and I'll just focus on the stuff important to RL, uh, and that's that's defining uh, rewards and um, like end of episode signal. So you'll basically have to have to 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 set up this log parsing config. 
in order to just define certain regex expressions uh, because the way that apps will communicate the reward information, as I think I mentioned, is through the, the log, log uh, basically through the log console. So here is an example of a, of a text proto file which defines the task. And if I expand it, you can see, so it's pretty self-explanatory. So perform these upon launching the, the environment, install the app, check if it's installed correctly, etc. So that's the not that interesting part. Let me just skip down to the this part. And basically you can see, you define the regex expression for your reward and for your score, uh, for the episode end signal, etc. And the way you now this all works is the following. So you might you might have noticed that tasks often rely on log uh, messages exposed by the Android system, which Android app can intercept and translate into items such as rewards, episode, and signals or task extras. And they said here, so of course applications might not send suitable messages by default. So in order to have access to such messages, we often add them to the app source code to match our expectation. For example, in the case of the 2048 uh, app. We find in the game source code the exact lines where the score is computed and add a line to log this value in the format that is expected by the text proto. Uh, so that's the, this file here. So as you can see here, some regular expressions, we have a plus or minus sign, then we have a couple of digits followed by a dot and then a couple of digits more. So basically a float, float like a scalar uh, value. Uh, and so you add the line to log this value in the format that is expected by the text proto or conversely, make sure that, yeah. Whatever. So basically, you'll have to edit the source code of your application by adding a logging uh, line here. And then through this text proto, you'll be able to send that environment to the agent. And that's how you're going to actually train and set up everything. And finally, they have a couple of examples here on this page, uh, example tasks. And I'll just link all of these in the description. But basically, here is a really simple environment they created. And in this one, uh, so take like let's take this one as an example. So basically, the RL agent gets a reward plus one if it clicks the B button, and if it clicks the A button, it just uh, the the episode ends because that's how they defined it. And basically, what happens then is the app uh, shuts down, and the environment will automatically uh, launch relaunch the app again, and that's done through all, through the task proto file we we just saw. So that's how it works, and there, aside from this one, they have a bunch of other examples like with a calculator, some games, um, like the 2084 they mentioned uh, for which they had to modify the source code and like chess. So yeah, a bunch of different stuff. Um, and yeah, hopefully you found this one useful. If you did, um, leave a like, subscribe and see you in the next video.